Crosstalking Trump and Iran. I'm joined by my guest, Mohammed Morandi in Tehran. He's a professor at the University of Tehran. In Riyadh, we have Ahmed Al Ibrahim. He is a Saudi analyst. And in Miami, we cross to Nicholas Davies. He's an independent journalist, a researcher for Code Pink, as well as author of Blood on Our Hands, The American Invasion and Destruction of Iraq. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in in any time you want. And I always appreciate it. Mohammed, let me go to you uh, in uh, t- uh, Tehran. The, uh, Iran is being being, um, being called the culprit in all of this. Uh, just as I was sitting out in the studios, CNN is reporting that the Saudi government and uh, Washington have a very high probability that Iran did this. Instead of the, uh, pointing fingers here, I, I'd have to ask, I think, a, a far more germane question. Who benefits from this attack on Saudi energy assets? Who's the beneficiary? Go ahead, Mohammed. No one benefits except for perhaps it, the Israeli regime. But uh, at the end of the day, I think that the solution to all of this is for the Saudis to end the war in Yemen. The Saudis have been carrying out atrocities for four and a half years now. They've been bombing school buses, bombing schools, hospitals, ambulances, weddings, funerals. Uh, and they've been starving the country with the help of Western countries. And they've been given all the weapons that they need to carry out these atrocities by Europeans, by the Americans during previous administrations, current, the current administration, it's, yeah, I mean, across Europe and North America, they are guilty of war crimes. And of course, the Saudi regime is at the top of the list because they're carrying it out itself. So the, the story that needs to be discussed is the Saudi aggression against the country. If that comes to an end, if the Saudis recognize the rights of the people of Yemen, then all of this comes to an end. The, the Yemenis have become increasingly capable, sophisticated. Their drone and missile capabilities have been evolving during this period of time. And they've been hitting harder and better at uh, Saudi uh, installations and infrastructure. And the Saudis have lost the war in the south as well. The, the Saudis and the Emiratis by, through their proxies, are basically at each other's throats. So the, the real issue is that the, the atrocities in Yemen must come to an end. Okay, let and me, I don't buy this story yeah, well, I, that I, will missiles this, came from Iran yeah, yeah. over the Persian Gulf without the Americans being able to... It's 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 really it's really amazing. And the Americans, their military is rubbish. It's amazing. Just when you need to see something, they don't have eyes in the sky. Apparently, Uh, that's a topic for another program here. Ahmed, let me go to you. How do you react to what Mohammed had to say? Isn't it time? Because the war is a failure. It's only misery and destruction. Isn't it time for Saudi Arabia Arabia to end its uh, conflict in in Yemen and withdraw and maybe even pay reparations? Go ahead in Riyadh. Uh, I really don't understand why a Persian is talking about another Arab country. What do we have with the, with Yemen uh, is basically we have borders and we we, we are in, in Yemen uh, based on the government request in order to sustain the country on the south of Saudi Arabia to have a sustainable yeah, but Auckland, neighbor it's been to a Saudi failure. Arabia. But it's been a but failure. That doesn't have nothing. But it's been a failure. Uh, listen, listen, we, do, we don't know yet. Vietnam, how many years it took Vietnam, Iraq and Iran. How, so let's not shift, shift the subject from Iran attacking Vietnam. Saudi Arabia and taking it uh, and we make the the solution and the key for the solution in Yemen. Let's be very careful isn't, how we address is, it. Please. But isn't the okay, solution it's very to s- end the war? Isn't that the solution to no, end the sir. war? No, sir. No, sir. The solution of Iran is not to end of the war the Yemen. Iran has been doing this for numbers of years since 1979. Uh, Iran has been sending well, militias instead okay, of spending uh, the money Ahmed, of its own Ahmed, people. Ahmed, they support militia let's, in Iraq. Let's stay, they support let's stay militia with, in Syria let's and stay, Yemen. W- let's stay with the facts, okay? Your government and the U.S. government have a very high probability. That's their position. But the, the fact of the matter is that your country has destroyed one of the poorest countries in the world. That is a fact, and you have not won militarily. Let me go over to Nicholas in Miami. How do you respond so far to what we've heard in the program? Nicholas in Miami. Well, I, 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 w- I would respond to Ahmed um, by really that th- th- we should all remember how this war began. Um, President Hadi 
was only installed as president of Yemen for a two-year term for the purpose of writing a new constitution and holding new elections. The Houthis uh, invaded Sana'a and placed him under house arrest, uh, demanding that he do his job. They did not depose him as president. Um, and it was only after he fled first to Aden and then to Riyadh and uh, you know, I'm not sure whether it was his idea or prob probably the Saudis' idea to suggest to him that, uh, that he should uh, adopt some sort of Napoleon complex and claim to, that he was still the president of Yemen. Um, so on the pretext of, uh, you know, of, of, of restoring a, a, a failed, a failed regime to power in Yemen, uh, as, as you said very well, Peter, uh, the Saudis with their coalition, which includes the United States, and so, you know, President Obama and President Trump are, are entirely complicit in these war crimes and should also be held accountable for them. Um, they have destroyed uh, the, one of the poorest countries in the world. Um, according to ACLED in the UK, their latest report from June has counted 90,000 people killed in the war in Yemen. And that does not count a child dying of hunger and disease every 10 minutes. Um, the Yemen Data Project, uh, run by British journalist Iona Craig, has found that about one-third of the Saudi-led airstrikes are, in fact, against civilian targets. And so, uh, Peter, uh, you know, it All doesn't right. take, the whole point it doesn't is, take uh, much hang on, to, Nicholas. to conclude. Hang on, Nicholas. The point of the program is sure. to jump in, as I say. Peter, Ahmed, jump in. Peter, jump Peter, in. Are we, are, we, are we on the program to take my, your, my, my time and you put your own thoughts and talking about Iran? You're talking. We're going to talk on, Ye You're uh, talking. on Yemen. On You're Yemen. talking. No, I'm not talking. I'm You're not talking. talking. I, did, I didn't get the time to talk like Nicholas and Mohammed. I'm not talking about Yemen over here. I came Go. for the program. Your producer, go. talk to us to come go. and talk about the Iran. Well, you're, you're chewing up your time complaining. Why don't you I'm make your chewing. argument? But, but, make but, your listen, argument but, and don't but, chew I'm up time. My argue, I'm making go my ahead. argument. It's bad. I'm not chewing up time, but you need to be fair and balanced like your agency. But anyway, so what I'm talking about is Iran has all the footprint, handprints on the attack of a gig. Okay, and this is a destruction for the world economy. There is Saudi Arabia has some challenges in the region. These challenges are worked with the international community. If Yemen is an issue, we could have, if we have the bad intention in Yemen, we could have dumped a hundred billion dollars, and we have the whole tribes killing each other. But we don't like this. Saudi Arabia is not in business. <laughs> well, you, you, you have you, you have spent people, a lot of okay? money, and you've gotten the, nothing for the, it except the, for the, death the, and the destruction. Solution, the solution of Iran not to interfere in the region, my friend, is to stop Iran from inflating in other countries and, and other race. Iran, for what it's called, it's Persia. They have nothing to do with the Arab race. They have nothing to do with Lebanon. They are killing innocent people in Syria. And there is a 40 militias, Iranian militias in Iraq. Spending the, the Iranian people money is wrong to kill other people. Look at, at all countries that Saudi Arabia has stepped in and, uh, and supported. Look at Egypt. Look at Lebanon. Look at Iraq now. We're building stadiums. We're giving them money. Uh, Yemen, we are trying to restore them so we can build them again. There is challenges. We are not angels well, and stop putting perfection okay. on Saudi Arabia. All right, Arabia. let me go. Let me you go. Know, if it's let me go to uh, Mohammed in Tehran. Would you like to reply to that? Go ahead, Mohammed. Well, some of what he said sounds somewhat racist, and uh, I won't go down that road. But I think your viewers noticed quite well he he did that twice. Uh, obviously, people in the region don't agree with him at all in Lebanon or in Iraq or in Syria or in Yemen, because they are resisting. Saudi aggression. They are resisting Saudi-backed extremism. The Saudis have taken their own agent in Lebanon, the prime minister, and beat him. They have killed their citizen in, who's been on this show with me uh, in uh, their consulate in Turkey, Jamal Khashoggi. They have been massacring people in Yemen for four and a half years 
and forcing them on starvation. They have created a blockade against Qatar, who was their ally just until a few years ago. This is a, a regime that is carrying out aggressive acts against its Arab neighbors. So, and, and the fact that the Saudi regime, according to WikiLeaks, according to Hillary Clinton's emails, has been supporting ISIS is another point altogether. So, and, and I would like to add to what your other guests had pointed out, that Mansur Hadi was not only a, supposed to be in power for two years, his two years were over. He stayed on. He was not legitimate. Just because the Saudis at that time had influence and other countries thought that the Saudis would win this war within a couple of weeks, they got their way and forced uh, the, much of the Western com- countries, the we- Western countries more or less, to support Mansur Hadi as the legitimate president. But he's never been in the capital for the last four and a half years. He was never elected. He was the only candidate in the election, and he was supposed to be in power for two years, and he stayed on after two years. Okay, so Mohammed, I've got, really don't I got to jump in here. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I have to jump to in here. I have to go to a break, gentlemen. After <laughs> a short break, money. we'll continue our discussion on Trump and Iran. Stay with our team. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter LaBelle. To remind you, we're discussing Trump and Iran. Okay, let's go back to Riyadh. Ahmed, I'm titling this program uh, Locked and uh, Loaded. Uh, would you like to see the United States uh, commit a military strike against Iran? Of course not. We are not in the position to lose anything. Iran has nothing to lose. Look at their uh, look at the JDB. Look at their, how much they give you interest to put in the bank. Look at the, the poverty of Iran. The Saudis and the Saudi government and the people, we have a pretty good deal. We are moving forward. We are part of the G20. We have the G20 this year. We are doing very well. We are extracting a lot of foreign money into Saudi Arabia. We definitely don't want a war. We don't want to go that route. We want Iran to contain by international communities. We don't want to see the Iranian people suffer because we know how much they are suffering inside, you know, inside their ruthless, devilish regime. We would like the Iranian people to have the same deal we have. So no, we don't want war with Iran, but Saudi Arabia has the final say on when to start and launch and retaliate on what Iran has been several hundred times attacked the so soil you're, of, you're, uh, of you, Saudi you Arabia. Want to see, not mentioning you want to see the, your country, the two holy mosques. You want to see your country involved in a military strike against Iran. I just want clarification of what you just said. Peter, 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 read my lips. I don't want my country to be involved in war with Iran. Is it clear? I'm saying Iran needs to be contained by a military order by the war or the by United Nation in a politics manner. Is it clear, Peter? Yeah, well, you're talking about international law, but you illegally invaded uh, a Yemen. So don't, lobby does so not don't tell me about international law, okay? D- don't, don't, let, no, 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 no. Let no. me go to don't, Nicholas. I'm not I said I don't want filibustering, and everyone is going to get the equal amount of time. Nicholas, don't I go to you. It is your turn it's to speak. Hoc. Go ahead, Nicholas, in Miami. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that... Um, as long as us, we here in America can prevent Trump from actually, uh, you know, using this as a cause for war and launching, launching military strikes on Iran, which, which really could very quickly escalate right. into, um, you know, an unstoppable regional war. Um, as, as long as we can prevent that happening in the next few days, um, then I, I think, I, I think the, the fact that the Houthis can now strike at the heart of uh, Saudi Arabia in this way may actually be, um, you know, an opportunity for peace. A because, catalyst, a catalyst. Um, I, yeah. I, as somebody, I, I, yes, exactly. I, as, as somebody else said, um, you know, the, the Saudis got international support for this war because people assumed they could easily defeat the, uh, the, the Yemenis, the, the Houthis. Um, you know, how many times has the world been wrong 
<laughs> about these wars in the last 20 years. Every time, you, you know, the U.S. or its allies launch a war, um, you know, it has tur turned out to have been far more bloody and drawn out and horrific and catastrophic than, um, than they bargained for. And, uh, and, but, you know, what does Saudi Arabia have to gain now by continuing to escalate the war? Um, you know, there is strong pressure now to, to get here, to get the U.S. out of this war. Trump had to veto a war yeah. powers resolution. Shameless, shameless. That resolution shameless. Would, would, would put Congress back in, in charge of, um, of, of issues of war and peace, which is part of their constitutional role. And they have re the House has reintroduced that resolution as part of the military budget for, for 2020. Um, as long as the Senate goes along with that, then Trump will be faced with a choice between either, um, either accepting an end to the U.S. role in the, in the war in Yemen or vetoing the entire military budget. Um, that is the position we want to put him in. Um, and, and so, the, you know, there is major pushback, in, you know, from the more progressive members of Congress, plus Rand Paul, of course, in the Senate, um, to, to, and including several of the Democratic presidential candidates, Bernie, led by Bernie Sanders, to actually curtail, you know, the vital U.S. support for this horrific war. Okay. And so this, this, um, this development may be a catalyst, as you okay. said, for M that. Uh, Mohammed, I mean, again, they haven't uh, uh, disproven that the Houthi uh, uh, did this, um, and it would be under international law an act of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, resistance from foreign invasion. Um, but it tells me also it's quite embarrassing for Saudi Arabia that after all the hundreds of billions of dollars they spent on defense, they can't fight against uh, homemade um, drones. I mean, this is a, quite a remarkable thing. And if they can do it once, I suppose they could do it again. And I think it is a signal that this war must come to an end immediately because this could, we'll use the word again, the same word catalyst again, but it could be a catalyst for something far, far worse. Isn't this a wake up call? Go ahead, Mohammed. So we're supposed to believe that hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent by the Saudis for military capability which is focused on Iran and the Persian Gulf. And then we have all sorts of American and Western bases in the Persian Gulf as well. You have American naval ships in the Persian Gulf. And they cannot detect drones and missiles flying from Iran across the Persian Gulf into, uh, towards Saudi targets. That's, that's ridiculous. No one is going to believe that. No, no sane person will believe that. And if they can't detect these missiles, then they should leave. And they should stop selling their weapons because they're junk. On the other hand, the Americans have a huge presence in Iraq and they have a huge intelligence gathering program in Iraq because they occupied the country for so many years. They've, they have agents all over the country. And then they have bases in the, in the northern Persian Gulf region as well. And, and, and of course their Navy. So the Americans, if they can't detect anything coming from the north either, then th the same is true. They should just leave and they should stop selling weapons. The reality is that the Saudis are waging a cruel and inhumane and barbaric war with the support of Western countries. Obama is a war criminal, and so are other Western leaders, current and past. They are all war, all war criminals, and they are part of this war. This war has to come to an end. If the Saudis do not want to be hurt, they have to stop killing Arabs, because your, your guest in Riyadh speaks about Arabs in a sort of in a, a racially distinct way. They have to stop killing Arabs, whether they're in Syria, whether they're in Iraq, whether they're in uh, Yemen, or whether they're in Qatar, they should not be threatened by Saudi Arabia. And of course, I'm not going to talk about North Africa and the role that the Saudis are playing there. But one final thing that I'd like to point out, and that is the United States has to recognize that Iran and its regional partners and allies whether it, from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea to Central Asia to the Hindu Kush, they are very powerful. And if 
the United States thinks that they can strike at Iran and get away with it, they are badly mistaken. Yep. Any s small attack on Iran will have a disproportionate response from the country. And the, this will lead to a catastrophic situation. The oil and gas installations in the region will be destroyed. If the, if, if the uh, Yemeni resistance can do what they did to the Saudis, and this wasn't their first attack, by the way, if they, and they are becoming more and more developed, if they can do this to the Saudis, imagine what the Iranians could easily do to the Saudis and the Emiratis. They would bring down these two regimes immediately. And then when war takes place, do you think that people in Yemen, the forces of the Yemeni government and the resistance will not push into Saudi Arabia? And the people in Iraq who have so many grievances against Saudi Arabia for their support for ISIS for all those years, do you think they're not going to push into northern Saudi Arabia? The Americans mm -hmm. will not be able to contain such a catastrophic situation. And you will have millions upon millions of people fleeing the region, and it will make the Syrian refugee crisis look like a small stream. This yeah. will be like a big right, let's river let's compared let's to let's small go to, stream. Let's go to Riyadh. It will get destroy the global economy. Let's and, and no, and the Americans, their empire will collapse. Okay, let's go to Ahmed in, in, in Riyadh. I mean, uh, Ahmed, uh, I know you're not the Saudi government, but what is victory? How do you define victory in Yemen? How would you define that if it were to come to pass? Uh, <clears throat> who said there is victory in Yemen? I said, what who is, said there is a no, victory No, 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 I'm anywhere. asking, I'm okay, asking so you, what no would more. it mean? I mean no what would it mean to have victory? What would it mean to you? We just need the people of Yemen, and there is a government of Yemen, when they reach the solution, and you take all the terrorists' hand, and the people who want to overthrow the legitimate government that's sitting south of Saudi Arabia with the border, when they get all into a political solution, and they come and, to, and the coalition assess that with all the international community, then everybody is going to call this, uh, you know, uh, escalation off. So this is where the mandate of Saudi Arabia. We are not interested in going. Well, the uh, Emirati-backed proxies want are attacking a your a supporters in neighbor. southern Yemen. Okay, I didn't really hear that, uh, Mohammed. What did you uh, wanted to say? Go ahead. I was just saying that Emirati proxies in Yemen are attacking Saudi supporters, the Saudi-backed. Uh, groups in uh, southern Yemen right if, now. If, if, the two if, countries if, are if, at if, each other's throats. The, Yemeni, the, the, Yemeni, the, the, Yemeni, the Emiratis have been bombing Saudi-backed forces source, then you know, and tribes. You can take the leaks and you actually can capitalize on it because all your sources are from WikiLeaks. So I don't blame you if you come up with this daydream statements and ideas I about didn't speak what's about going on. WikiLeaks. So anyway, back to the I'm subject. talking about the so last few weeks. So we have a problem. I'm talking uh, about the last few weeks. All right, hang on, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I'm going to Arabia has I want to go to Miami last 30 Peter, seconds. I think go it's to my you. Turn, right? go, that's right. Peter, 30 seconds. Peter, 30 Peter, seconds. Did Nicholas. Did I Nicholas, take, did I take go my ahead. Time, Peter. Keep that in mind, Peter. Keep that yes. in mind to be fair okay. about well, it. I, in front I, of I your think, uh, viewers. Remember I, the fate of Jamal Khashoggi. Remember the fate of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, remember our embassy that you burn. Remember Whatever all the innocent aid. people that you okay, had with the president. Okay, I figured we would have a program remember, like this. Remember, and that's how we end a Come very on. acrimonious episode of Crosstalk. Many thanks to my guests in Tehran, Riyadh, and in Miami.